Well, in the US, Democrats in the House of Representatives have passed legislation aimed at restoring voting rights, which have been altered by the Supreme Court, but it now faces an uphill battle in the Senate, where it needs Republican support to pass. Activists are now planning marches in support of voting rights in several US cities on Saturday, which will be the 58th anniversary of Martin Luther King's historic march on Washington. And Martin Luther King's son, Martin Luther King III, joins us now from Atlanta, and he will be leading those marches. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, why do you think it's important that you have these marches? Well, um, actually, at the beginning of the year, everyone talked about the election of last year and how successful it was, how many people voted around the country. But all of a sudden, at some point, uh, 18, now almost 20 states have imposed restrictive voting rights making it very difficult for blacks and browns and students and seniors to vote. And uh, most of these are Republican-led states. Uh, these restrictive laws are under a lie that President uh, Trump said he won. But yet everybody knows that's not the case. Why are we restricting people's rights to vote? We should be expanding the right to vote. As you said, the Congress just passed the John Lewis Voter Registration Restoration Act, which gives uh, federal oversight. Now the Senate must do the same. That's what we are going to be demanding on Saturday as we do these marches all over our country. Expansion of voter rights, not reducing the right to vote. It's still stalled in the Senate, hasn't it? I mean, have you had conversations with the senators and congresspeople who've restricted protections to that act? And what are they saying to you? What are their concerns? Well, the initial concern on the side uh, was, on the Republican side, was, well, what about the ID provisions? And that's what they claim they're doing. Well, if there was no fraud, why are we changing the process? If there was nothing wrong with the elections at all last year, why would you need to create a process that makes it stifles the right to vote? That is really um, unconscionable. And therefore, the people must put pressure on the policymakers. And that's what we're doing by our demonstrations. We're going to be calling our senators. We're going to be registering over 2 million people between now and the midterm elections. We're going to be doing all that we can to make sure that the John Lewis bill is passed so that there's some federal oversight of what is being done in these states that are making it hard for people to vote. What do, what do you make to comments, um, what do you make of, excuse me, or say to comments like Mike Pence, right? He said that restoring the voting rights will, quote, increase opportunities for election fraud, trample the First Amendment, further erode confidence in our elections and forever dilute the votes of legally qualified, qualified eligible voters. I mean, what do you say to a statement like that? Well, first of all, that is just a political statement for winning a position. It is not a fact. There's been no fraud, so I don't even know what he's talking about. I don't think he knows what he's talking about, other than he's trying to foster a position. The fact of the matter is everyone should have the right to vote from an encumbrant standpoint. You don't need to reduce polling places. You don't need to reduce the amount of places where people can drop ballots off. You don't need to do those kind of things that are being done that are specifically targeting the black and brown community. This is all about reducing the ability of people to vote. It is not about expanding. We should be expanding. We talk about democracy all over the world, yet we're suppressing democracy at home. That to me is hypocritical. Now you challenge those um, who, quote, wondered if they would march with Dr. King. You're asking them, are you marching now? Um, do you think that there is as much at stake today as there was in 1963? There is certainly a critically uh, as much at stake in relationship to what direction this country is going to go in, in. Is it going to move forward or are we going to try to move backwards? And we saw what backwards was under the last four years uh, when President Trump was president. He was dividing us. He was dividing the world, in fact. And so the fact of the matter is for the president, President Biden and Vice President Harris to get an agenda moving forward that brings 
uh, jobs, that creates opportunity, that even talks about the infrastructure bill, then there has to be a leadership there to assist them. And that leadership will not be able to be elected if you're reducing the right of people to vote as opposed to expanding uh, people's rights okay. to vote. Okay, Martin Luther King, thank you so much for talking to us.